live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's theCUBE, covering AWS reInvent 2016. Brought to you by AWS and its ecosystem partners. Now, here's your host, John Furrier. Hey, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Las Vegas for Amazon reInvent. This is SiliconANGLE's The Cube, our flagship program, where we go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier with Al Fergio, founder and chief strategy officer of Console Inc., formerly the founding CEO, uh, fast growing startup, doing some pretty amazing things in an area that was once nuanced, now mainstream, as pointed out by James Hamilton on Tuesday night, laying out the secret sauce of Amazon success. Now that Amazon success will soon be available for customers and through console. I'm looking forward to this conversation. Al, great to see you. Thanks for having me, John. Um, so first of all, you guys had great success, um, had um, good funding. What's the funding traction now? What was the last round of funding you did? Yeah, um, it was last year with, um, uh, led by Formation 8, um, NEA, uh, among other tech visionaries as well. We we're very fortunate to um, have their support and, and uh, allow us to continue to uh, accelerate our, our uh, execution and growth uh, strategy. We won't really the number, but big numbers. My question to you is, um, watching James Hamilton Tuesday night laid out Amazon's chicken sauce, from silicon, uh, making their own silicon, to really owning the route of the pack, and he said something on his uh, presentation Tuesday night, the key to success for Amazon, internal to their internal cloud operation, is to not let the packets touch, let anyone touch the packets, meaning that means they can control the packet end to end. Your business model is to do that for customers. Exactly. This validates your entire thesis as a founder, so that must make you feel good. <laughs> so what does that mean? I mean and, and how do you go, and what do you guys do specifically to provide that kind of benefit to customers? So, um, it, it, exactly how you know, um, uh, Hamilton had articulated is exactly how we, you know, we feel all enterprises should be thinking. Happy um, birthday, Mr. Furrier. Happy birthday, John. <laughs> 25 dollar chips, it should be hundreds. Come on. <laughs> Birthday. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm now embarrassed on the cube. <laughs> is that edible? <laughs> what the hell is this? <laughs> Joe Burrier is speechless. <laughs> Let's hear it from Big John. Wow. Okay, Mary, she's not going to butter me up to get good articles for Amazon. <laughs> All right, well thanks to Mary Camerata. It's not going to sway my critical analysis of Andy Jassy when he comes on theCUBE. So. Thanks, Mary. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate it. All right, now, where were we? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I, you know, as I was saying, uh, you were in on this, were you? Yeah. Were you in on this? No. Uh, well, yeah. They gave me the uh, the heads up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what a surprise! I really appreciate, guys. Thanks so much, everyone out there and on the team. Fifty-one years old. It's pretty old. Seen a lot in my day. Thanks. Uh, thanks for everything. Well, appreciate we hope it. you enjoyed the cake, John. Thanks, Al. Appreciate it. <laughs> Bill, you guys are crazy. You guys are crazy. Hope that's 60, how about I make it to 61 if I don't drop dead doing a CUBE interview someday. <laughs> um, well, back to Amazon, my 51st birthday. Amazon's 10 years old, right? So, and they're young. Their birthday was 10 years this year. I talked to Andy Jassy about the next 10 years and it's all about customer satisfaction, customer success, iterating fast. Um, it's always hard to do that, the network layer. But again, back to James Hamilton, they are optimizing down at a level. This is what you guys do. You guys are, are network geeks. You guys saw a problem, Bill Norton, who uh, was on earlier. You know, you guys know how to do packets. That's right. What's the fundamental problem that you're solving? What's, what are customers um, suffering through? Well, um, I mean, first, first and foremost, Amazon being in the forefront of innovation and, and really acknowledging the fact and, 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 and putting out their key data points for enterprises to really take a chapter out of that playbook, you know, um, and, and how they need to be thinking, how they need to be architecting uh, and leveraging solutions like console, essentially. We are, um, what Amazon in effect is doing internally, we provide that solution for the, 
for an enterprise. So that they through a use case. So I, I'm a customer, I'm an enterprise, I'm using the backbone to switch through the internet. I've got web services like box.com, Dropbox. Are you saying that you can provide an end-to-end -end situation where no one touches that packet? That's right, it doesn't touch the public internet. It's completely private, um, in effect bypassing the public internet and directly connecting you to uh, business critical SaaS applications, call it infrastructure provider like AWS, and it's direct. You have control, in, in effect, over path or direction of your data, and it's only you and that application on that highway. Uh, and it's, again, not accessible via the public internet. So it's providing a much higher level of, of privacy, security, and ultimately performance. You so who's using you guys? What customers do you have? Um, you know, some that I could speak of, uh, there's you know, airlines uh, that we have, um, where you know, we, we, we touch various different verticals. You know, it's it's uh, not one vertical, not one type of enterprise. This is some, you know, there's a lot of data out there in terms of um, you know, the average enterprise today using about 25 SaaS applications. I mean, it's, it's SaaS, cloud is touching everybody today. So, um, the customers you can't name, can you like talk about the industry, how big they are? I mean, what are some of the use cases? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, direct connect to AWS, you know, a very classic use case, you know. Um, needing that consistent throughput, that reliable connection um, that you, you know, typically can't uh, uh, come to expect on a consistent basis with, uh, with the public internet. We're also seeing the rise of uh, DDoS attacks and all of these things that are happening uh, with, uh, with public internet. Is IOT a big market for you guys? Because IOT certainly might be something. Is that, how do you do a direct connect for IOT? Do you do it through Amazon? How does a customer deal with an IOT problem? Well, um, in, in, you know, to the extent that an enterprise um, wants to avoid certain I IOT type issues, you know, um, again, you know, s uh, uh, console provides a solution for end-to-end -end private connectivity. Um, and, and, you know, security obviously is top of mind for uh, many CIOs, and, um, you know, with what we provide, um, it, it provides the ability to connect to this global ecosystem of their business critical partners uh, and the best part is that we've made it, you know, with a few clicks of a button. So, uh, what's the strategy? The chief strategy officer now, yeah. which is great, by the way. Love when founders stay in the in the in the uh, helm for the company. Might not do the day-to-day -day CEOing, but for the most part, it's uh, turbulent waters for most people. Cloud is shifting. Now you have an advantage. The world is going where you are, so that's cool. But what's next? What is it? A product innovation? Is it customer growth? What's the plan? Well, first and foremost, it's it's about ecosystem. Um, you know, we're, we're, we continue to grow our ecosystem of cloud infrastructure, uh, SaaS providers that um, um, enterprises can directly connect to via our platform. You know, that first and foremost is, is um, core to our uh, um, beliefs, our initial vision, and um, we, we today have one of the largest um, uh, cloud-centric ecosystems out there. So I got to ask you a question to get a little geeky on you. I saw that Bill Norton at uh, an event we did the Cube at, uh, Bill Norton on your team. Uh, guru, uh, Dr. Peering, he's called, wearing a coat, walking around the show floor. Um, DrPeering.com, I think is the website. But he's a guru in packets, understands routes, understands all these issues. Um, he was telling me that the, the routes between clouds and interclouding are not all created equal. And this, so, what you see and what you get are two different things. Does that play into any kind of fear of customers? How do you guys solve that problem? Do you solve it? Or is that an industry uh, uh, evolutionary um, issue? So on average, between the point of origination of data and destination of data, there's over four organizations in this public path. Um, and you, know, you could really think of it uh, as being in this crowded bus, this shared fate vehicle, uh, that your packets are um, um, bundled together with other organizations. You know? Um, not necessarily taking a direct path. So there's things that happen on a, on a daily basis uh, with public internet that you know, maybe to the naked eye is, is unbeknownst to some, but when you start to analyze this data and you see the inconsistencies that happen to that um, packet flow, uh, or, uh, or lack thereof in some cases, um, and then compare it to being directly connected, yeah. in, you know, in many cases the results are like night and day. It's so weird, I've never done a Cuban with a cake on the table before, so I'm kind of distracted. I'm thinking about, <laughs> I'm hungry. Um, back, to, back to the customers. I mean, are you early adopter mode right now, or is this table stakes for security? I mean, it would seem to me that if I'm an enterprise, I need to do this right now. Is there an alternative? Are you guys the only game in town, or? Um, so, we, we definitely had a first mover advantage. Um, 
Um, you know, if we, you know, we rewind the clock past over the past few years and we've um, taken advantage of that. You know, we took a phased approach. We wanted to um, seed our platform with key cloud SaaS providers and so forth. Now it's all about our enterprise go to market. And the timing for that is, is you know, from our um, po point of view is, is perfect. It's well timed. I mean, this, this event in itself is, is, is a testament to uh, the growth we're seeing in cloud. I mean, last year was around 19,000, about 32,000 people. Um, attending this year. I mean, it's growing exponentially. And, um, and we today have built out our solution. It's global, it's over 170 global points of presence. Um, our solution's available across North America, Europe in the EMEA region, and now uh, the Asia Pacific region. Yeah. So we've really gotten it to a point where it's a global solution. You know, um, for enterprises, it's not. How easy it is to use? I mean, I'm an enterprise. To me, my my mind is like I don't have a mental model around it, but it it seems super complex to, to implement. So if I'm used to you know providing provisioning a circuit, that would take a shitload a long time to do. Right. I mean, but yeah. How do you guys work? So um, if you look at what we call the one dot o method, the manual method to do all of uh, to otherwise do what we do, uh, it is really complex. Um, thanks, but however, you know, all of the hard work that our engineering teams have done and so forth, it's, it's made it seem really simple. Um, customers log into our application, um, identify the uh, organizations that they want to connect to, um, and click a button. It's yeah. kind of like a, a, um, a social experience if you're on LinkedIn, for example, uh, and wanting to connect to another organization. You go on, or Are individual. Are you finding a social network dynamic is kicking in? Um, you know, connecting to another organization in effect has always been social. I can't just connect to you. Yeah. Um, even if I wanted to do it the old fashioned way. Um, and we took a 2.0 approach to that. We, we built um, additional functionality in our application so that collaboration can happen right within our platform. And um, so it's really so very so much it, so. It is a social network, there's trust involved. Yeah, it's plumbing. Absolutely. So I got to ask you a question. Is, is the internet turning plumbers into, into machinists? I mean, <laughs> with the cloud, it's almost getting to the point where you're just pushing buttons. Is that where it's going to end up going? Less plumbers, more machinists? Well, we, Easy analogy. you know, in terms of um, um, our focus as an organization, it, it is about making it as simple as possible for the enterprise, our enterprise customers. And you know, we'll continue to invest in innovation uh, to bring forth new products, new features, um, so that uh, they could spend time doing other things that are important to their business and not have to deal with uh, the racking and stacking of network gear in a, uh, in a, at a global scale. You know, uh, um, our platform takes care of all of that. And you guys are funded by NEA. I was at their party last night. Pete Sonsini was here, uh, some of the other partners. And uh, those are, they're a tier one investor. I mean, those guys are really solid. They're the, one of the best, if not the best, in there. Um, what do they think about this? Are they like, Double down, Al, keep running hard. What do the investors think? Um, we're very fortunate to have NEA as an investor. They were, um, um, you know, they, they were there from our A round, you know, really saw and embraced the vision very early on uh, and have been incredibly supportive. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and with that, having that validation uh, for us at such an early stage, it's, it's really helped us get to where we are today. Yeah, and then uh, just to put a plug out for NEA, they're one of the best VCs, they stick by their entrepreneurs, and most recently had a loss, one of their partners died suddenly. Harry Weller, I want to wish uh, everyone at NEA and associated with NEA, um, our condolences on theCUBE, uh, tragic uh, death of a great partner, great entrepreneur friend, um, so that's been, been kind of a bummer uh, there. But great firm, if you're an entrepreneur at NEA, they, they stick with their founders, uh, and make things happen, so uh, you got a great investor. Okay, what's next? Amazon is kicking ass and taking names, <laughs> okay? Your thoughts on the show, observations besides the fact that it's 32,000 people, center of the universe. What's your take of Amazon's world, place in the world order right now? You know, it's, um, it's, it's hard to um, imagine a scenario where someone else could catch up. They are innovating, um, the, the product portfolio that they have here, it, it's just phenomenal. Um, and I'm, I'm sure we'll continue to see more of the same come out of Amazon. Well, we're psyched to be four years with uh, Amazon. We were following them before they were huge. <laughs> now they're big and now so everyone's on the bandwagon, but for legit reasons. The services, the lower the cost, and architecturally, James Hamilton is really onto something, and again, uh, congratulations to you guys at Console because he is validating at that scale what you guys have been doing. And I know as an entrepreneur, you probably had your moments where some people just don't get the vision. Yeah. 
now it's out there. Yeah, you're, you, you know, early days you're concerned, is, are you too early? Um, but, uh, you know, we're very fortunate as an organization to be yeah. well-timed. Well, you guys got a great team. Congratulations, Al Bergio, great entrepreneur. Great venture, turns out that he went to where the puck is coming. He's right there. Hopefully you can skate with the puck <laughs> with the Amazons of the world. Congratulations. Thank you, John. Console Inc., check it out. I'm John Furrier with theCUBE. Celebrate my 51st birthday in the cake. Thanks to the team. Guys, I'm uh, speechless. Never speechless, but I'm humble. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mary. That's a wrap. Oh,